Hello, how are you? I'm Jeff Ponder Twardy, pastor of St. Mark United Methodist Church in Anniston, Alabama, on the corner of Greenbrier Deer Road and Golden Spring Road. I'm glad we're together today. Uh, I, I, I don't have a lot today. I do have a little bit, and I'll read a little scripture, and I'll speak a little bit, and then we'll pray, and, and I just want to share this with you because I think that's what I'm supposed to do. I just do. So, um, this is a reminder too that where I get my devotional material or what I do devotionally is I follow the daily office of, in, the book of, in the Book of Common Prayer. And so, in, in doing so, I, I follow, not all the time, but there's a morning psalm, an evening psalm, a gospel lesson, an epistle lesson, and an Old Testament lesson. Old Testament or epistle lesson means it's it's from the the letters of Paul or Peter or John, uh, or it might be from the Book of Acts. So anyway, whoops. So anyway, um, I'm going to read to you from the Psalm 102, which I've done before, uh, because again, it's the morning Psalm today, and uh, it's uh, verses. I'm going to focus on verses 18 to 20. 18 to 22, right? Yeah, 18 to 22. And uh, it's going to be the message paraphrase um, because it meant so much to me in times past. Interestingly enough, um, in the uh, epistle lesson today from Acts, Paul is, he's arrested in Jerusalem and uh, he just tells the um, uh, the one that's holding him, a Roman officer, I have something to say to the crowd. So he speaks to the crowd and he speaks about his, he gives his testimony uh, at the end of chapter 21 to 22, I think is how it goes. And uh, so he gives his testimony uh, about what he was. Um, he'd been trained under the feet of Gamaliel. Uh, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees and he was a prosecutor persecutor and prosecutor, I guess you could say, of the way, the early church. And so um, he gives that testimony. He gives a testimony about on being on the road to Damascus and encountering Jesus. And uh, that's that's he gives that. And, he, and that's the, the epistle lesson for today, this Friday. Uh, the psalm, morning psalm again, is Psalm 102. So I'm going to share this a little bit with you and just kind of like focus on what I want to focus on today. Okay. This is the message paraphrase. Okay. Starting at verse 18, Psalm 102. Write this down for the next generation so people not yet born will praise God. God looked out from his high holy place. From heaven he surveyed the earth. He listened to the groans of the doomed. He opened their death cells. Write it so the story could be told in Zion. So God's praise could be sung in Jerusalem streets and wherever people to gather together along with their rulers to worship him. This scripture to me um, is very much alive. It's still very much alive to me. Uh, particularly um, Initially, when uh, the psalmist says, write this down for the next generation, so people not yet born will praise God. And write, what the, write what down? And this, God looked out from his high holy place from heaven, he surveyed the earth. He listened to the groans of the doomed, and he opened their death cells. I heard that, I read that at a certain point in my life when I had left leadership in ministry um, because I've just, say, lost my way. Um, but that got me focused again because it's simple. It's just simple. God looked out from his high holy place. We can all imagine that. God being way up high, looked out from his high holy place. He surveyed the earth. What did he look on the earth? Oh, he saw our sin. He saw how corrupted we are and how broken we are and how pitiful. He looked out from his high holy place, he surveyed the earth. He listened to the groans of the doomed. To those that we may call pitiful. To those we may call just, just 
Just nasty people. He listened to the groans of the doomed. What we may call nasty. What we may be call people that we wouldn't spend any time with. Because we're ashamed of, because we don't like, because we don't trust them, because they're this, because they're that. He listened to the groans of the doomed. Do you spend any time listening to the groans of the doomed? I spent some time, selected time, listening to the groans of the doomed. It's not the most pleasant place to be. It's not the most pleasant thing to listen to. He listened to the groans of the doomed, and he opened their death cells. Period. End of thought. This is the gospel. This is what God has done. This is what God is doing. This is what God will do. Oh no, what we need to do is walk down the sawdust trail and confess our sins and be ashamed for who we are and God will show pity based on what he has done for us. Why, I don't know, in his son, Jesus Christ. That's not the gospel. That's religion. That's hooey. That's no reason for me to go to church. There may not be any reason for you to go to church. In fact, I'm not really encouraging you to go to church to hear that muck and mire. This, I read this morning, this, that not only gives me hope, but makes me all the more wanting to spend more time with Daddy and Mama God. This, he looked out from his high holy place, high and holy. Okay. He surveyed the earth. Good. He listened to the groans of the doomed. Those who have no hope. Those who may have become pitiful and sad and angry and untrustworthy. Maybe because they have, they've cried out from their place of doom for a long, long time and no one seems to hear them. And no one seems to care. But the psalm says... He listened to the groans of the doomed, and he opened their death cells. What if the fact of the matter, what if the fact of the matter is, what if the fact of the matter is, is that he has already opened the doors of the doomed from their death cells. They can walk. They can leave. And they just don't realize the door is unlatched. It's unlocked. Perhaps they haven't heard the invitation. Simply step through the door that's already open to you. He's already unlocked the door. He sees where you are. He's not ashamed of you. He's not angry with you. He holds nothing against you. All that stuff regarding things that separate us from God because of what we do and our behavior and what we say and who we've become and perhaps who we've ever been. It's already been solved. It's already been fixed. It's not an issue anymore. It's not an issue anymore between you and God. Anything you do that's destructive, it's destroying you. It's destroying someone else. You don't need to do it anymore. You don't need to be angry with God. Because God's not angry with you. He can be trusted. God can be trusted. He listened to the groans of the doomed and he opened their death cells. You're not in your death cell anymore. He's fixed it. He's resolved the issues. Write it down. Write it down then. Write it so the story could be told in Zion. So God's praise could be sung in Jerusalem's streets and wherever people gather together along with their rulers to worship him. Write it so the story could be told in Zion. Write it down so you can tell the story. Write it down. God has opened your death cell. Write it down. He's opened your death cell. And you can tell others. 
He's open your death cell. I'm not interested. You're not interested either in being high and holy mighty. You know, you know, sitting in a pew with a shirt and tie. Nobody sits in a pew with a shirt and tie anymore. I go to church all the time. Nobody sits in a pew with a shirt and tie anymore. Nobody. Nobody. No man. None. Nobody. Well, very, 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 very few. Let's put it that way. That. It's not a matter of you being high, holy, and mighty. And, 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 and trying to fit some sort of cultural paradigm to fit into. The reality is, the paradigm is, all sin is fixed. All things that separate us from God are resolved. God has done it. He looks out from his high holy place. He listens to the groans of the doomed. And he opens their death cells. He opens their death cells all the time. Yours and mine. The door is open. Praise God. And now we tell the story. Lord, bless us today. We trust in you. You are worthy of being trusted. And we give you thanks for opening doors that we cannot open and for shutting doors we cannot shut. We give you thanks for you are good and you're always good. In the name of your Son, our Savior, we pray. Amen. All right, folks. Take care. We'll see you again later.